obviously be nice to be friendly with everyone have be respectful don't yeah. try and change who you are to fit in with other people mm. you know what i mean like you know if you're especially you know a lot of like drill rappers for example yeah. you know you don't want to go to a studio session and start trying to act like a bad boy because it's not going to look cool you know what i mean yeah, just stay, yeah. tr- stay stay true to who you are just be authentic you know, if you got invited to the studio session, there's a reason for that. So bear that in mind that you're good enough to be there. Mm. And uh, just focus on the music, I think, that's the main thing. Yo, what's good, people? It's Jay Cactus, and we're back again with episode 29 of Cactus Convos now. In today's episode, I've got one of the sickest drill producers in the game with me. Come He's on, produced man. for some of the ghosts like Digger D. Dig that, skinny flex, millions, just to name a few. He goes by oh. X10. X10, How's what's going, good, man? guys? I'm good, man. How you doing, man? You right? I'm all good, bro. I can't Come complain. On, on, yeah, man. it's good to link up again because it's been bro, a minute since we had that studio session. It's been time now, man. It's been I know. time. Man, like everyone's just so busy. Like before you know it, it's been like months. Like whenever you link up with people or see people, it's like, yeah, yeah, we need to catch up. We need another bro, session. All, and then... all the time, but like, I think it's a producer thing as well in particular. Yeah. Where everyone's like, it's so spontaneous nowadays as well. Yeah, like, everybody of course. with their sessions, like, yeah, it's hard to find time. But yeah, easy, it feels man. like not much is like planned in advance. Only like maybe like a week or something, if that. But it's just like, yeah. maybe the next day you've got a session and then you holler people. Literally, man. Like I feel like most of the sessions always come at the very last minute where you're like, who's free right now? Yeah. Kind of thing. Yeah, man. Definitely. Have you got any schedule for sessions at the moment then? Like, because you're, you're in sessions like a lot more than me anyway. So yeah, I don't know what I it's did, like with I your schedule. Like, at the moment, I'm doing like mainly sessions like three, four times a week, I reckon. Yeah, but I would try book them in maybe a week in advance. But like I said, like a lot of the main things they come like last minute. Just yeah, about of course. Even, you can't plan for them kind of things. Uh, definitely. And are these yeah. sessions with artists or producers or a bit of uh, both? A bit, a bit of both, really. And you know? so we do a lot of sessions with an artist and another producer. Yeah, uh, it, it makes sense to collaborate with the artist, and yeah, it always sounds better that way. I think. Yeah, definitely. Mm. Well, yo, first of all, I wanted to say congrats on the unknown placement. <laughs> I know you've worked with him before, but that one was so yeah. sick. So you're saying you're liking that one, the freestyle thing. With, uh, yeah, with you know what? It got me gassed here because I can't lie, for a minute I was getting a little bit bored of drill just because I've made it so many times mm. and it was like, yeah, it's definitely become more commercial, you know, with the sampling stuff and everything. And then um, unknown T is just, I've always been a fan of unknown T and your beats anyway. So yeah, it was just crazy. The whole like video concept too, like the yeah. top part thing. Just so Trust sick. me, bro. It's crazy. Like when we were in the studio and like him and his manager, they were explaining the concept to me. I was sitting, I was like, yeah, like, yeah. And I, I know this is gonna make a lot of sense. And he was like very passionate about making sure that the, the actual drill sound was staying alive, like, yeah. As opposed to kind of just water down. So he kind of wanted the beats to kind of show that as well. I suppose. Nah, but, definitely. Yeah, I'm, I'm very, ha- very happy with that track. That track is so sick. One of the best drops of the year so far, I think. Oh, 100%. Like, crazy. Yeah. When uh, when did you record that as well? Was it a while ago or just recently? Yeah, it was, it was probably like maybe two months ago we've been sitting on that maybe. Right. So but That's so not even quite... that long really, to, considering yeah. like some tracks take years bro, to drop. Bro, trust me, some, sometimes you'll be waiting for like six, eight months. But yeah. that over that, over that uh, for that song, we recorded it over like a period of maybe three, four sessions because yeah, it, yeah. it was a two-part. Two so it, it yeah. took the process took a little while, but it was worth it in the end, man. Nah, 100%. What what do you think of the state of drill right now? So I know I said I was getting like a little bit bored, but I mean, <laughs> what, mm. what's, what's your it thoughts gets... on it? I don't know, man. I feel like people who are upset about like the drill sound being watered down, it's mm. always changing. It's always going to be changing. So I feel like that's why it's quite interesting because yeah. I feel like every other week there's somebody popping up trying something innovative. Yeah. So yeah. even if it's not going quite mainstream, it's not becoming a commercial success. Like, if you keep your eye out, there is a lot of talent going about. There's a lot of cool stuff being released nowadays. Yeah, um, 100%. And as for the whole sample thing, like I feel like it's kind of easing down a little bit. It's kind of, from where it was, maybe six months ago. Yeah. Like, I feel like the, the UK has kind of decided, okay, the sound's kind of got to shift this way a little bit. And there's some, and I feel like it's quite evident with what you see on playlists, etc. Yeah. Um, but I like the way it's going right now, man. Yeah, I like, suppose it has to keep evolving, like... If That's everyone just stuck to the same piano stuff all that time, then people yeah. would have just got bored of that real quick anyway. So it does have to keep evolving. 100%. Otherwise, and you know, it's like people will get bored. 
And it's crazy as well because how it normally works, it comes around full circle. So at some point soon, yeah, you know, we're gonna see the old sound come back into style. Yeah, you know, yeah. You never know. In a few years' time, you're like drill in twenty twelve, you know, that was only ten years ago. So people are gonna be yeah. sampling that stuff, you know. And yeah. like, so it's it's crazy how it's gonna be the next like five years, I reckon. It's mad, isn't it? So you it's think crazy. that's what will happen then? You think um like the old sound will kind of come back, maybe yeah, just I, new drums, I reckon, maybe. I reckon I'll have its phase. Yeah, the drums are always changing. You know, the drums have been changing. Yeah. Um, genres have always been merging together. So you're gonna have so many like little subgenres like uh like jazzy yeah. drill or R and B drill. Or, the Afro drill like, seems to be popping right now as well. That's exactly bro. Like you 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 know what I mean? Like that's the sound right now. Yeah. 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 So, so, I think what, I made what do you think, my first you think about one, Afro like, drill the other day? I was, I was, I I was gonna say it, man, it's it's a vibe. It's a yeah. vibe <laughs> like. I, I can't be mad at it. Um, it's just different, <laughs> isn't it? Because like it's we've different. had the piano stuff, we've had like sampling yeah. stuff. Obviously, some of the Afro mm-hmm. drills like sampled as well. But it's like I like just hearing new shit sometimes. So yeah, I'm I'm not mad at it. Hundred percent. you? I f- I, yeah, no, I quite like it. I feel like again, like it's all just I wouldn't put it under drill if that makes yeah. sense. Yeah, it's just yeah. it's just a different type of music. I feel like it always comes down to the artist as well. But as for the yeah. beats, I have a producer scene that are like making these kind of beats, they're killing it right now. Yeah, like they're definitely. All, they're, they're killing it right now. 100%. I f- a lot of them, I don't know if you've ever heard like Brazilian funk, but mm. it's like an influence of that, that I'm hearing in a lot of these like Afro drill beats. It's like got like a little touch of Brazilian in yeah. it. I kind of like it. I've seen a lot of type beat channels blowing up with those beats right now as well. It seems to be a wave. Yeah, trust, but, but I feel like with a tight beat thing, you've got to stay on top of like, you know, what the current sound is. Yeah. And if you can be one of the people that kind of pioneers that sound, then you're clear, you're good. Yeah, you know definitely. I mean? You're still uploading beats to your other channel as well, right? Yeah, I've, I've been not inconsistent, but I'm about to do a whole rebrand of it. I'm going to yeah. push them out you know, kind of in a different way. You're going to try and be more creative with it. Um, oh, yeah. And kind can of you speak on speak. anything, what are you going to do with it yet? Are you kind of saving it until... Well, I mean, not really. I'm kind of figuring it out as we go along, to be honest. Like, yeah, yeah. But I just know that, you know, the, as, as for type B type channels, they need a very strong brand. Yeah, um, you're right. So that's, so that's what, you know, we're going to go for. I'm going to try and share the process along the way, especially yeah. on my other channel, trying to, trying to do, be like you, big J Cactus, man. <laughs> and trying to, trying to, you know, have a vlogging thing. So, you know, like, you know what's bad, yeah? Like, mm. everyone... Like people like me who do who have done like YouTube more than anything, we always want like placements, and we're kind of yeah. jealous of people that have got loads of credits and shit. And then it's like on the flip side, there's a lot it's, of people who have never done the vlog stuff or the YouTube stuff, and they kind of want that side as well. It's like ex- exactly, no one's ever bro. content or happy with what they've got. <laughs> no, of it's course, mad. man. But it keeps you on your toes, I suppose. Got to keep trying yeah. new things. And no, I feel definitely. like as long as, as, and long you, as I you... feel like you can do everything as well. Hundred sounds gonna say like when if you can balance your time, your energy, you know, you've got enough time to be creating visual content as well as, you know, like linking up and I feel like it goes hand in hand as well. Yeah. You know, people are gonna Especially be Especially if interest- you're gonna be vlogging your studio sessions, like you were saying. Yeah, people will be interested in seeing what it's like behind the scenes, I suppose. Hundred percent. So that's kind of a direction I'm looking to go into, to be honest. Yeah, because you could mm. be tapping into a like a market that no one's really done like obviously there's vlogs out there like studio mm. sessions and stuff but if you're doing like a lot of vlogs and it's like consistently you're consistently yeah. uploading vlogs then it's like something new that not everyone's doing because people like like me and like you know like ocean and lb we've done mm. tutorials for time but it's not like tons of studio sessions so yeah i think people will want to see especially if, if you manage to like get some vlogs with like dig a d or Unknown T, you know, that'd one of those crazy. ones. That would be sick. That'd be, that'd like be if you so were filming that session me. just before this music video dropped and then yeah. at the end of that, you could upload the whole thing and show everyone the journey. I think something Absolutely. like that would bang. Just be quality be content, I think. Yeah, 100%, man. Definitely. So, so, so what, what, what kind of direction are you trying to go in with like, the tutorials and stuff? Are you just trying to... Um, I'd say, you know what? Like, because I've done so many tutorials now and there's only mm. so many ways I can show people how to make a beat. I'm just thinking yeah. of ways to kind of elevate the content. So I don't know whether that's going to be with like challenges or just switching up the genre or... Yeah. I just want to keep it interesting, man. Cause that makes sense, yeah, man. 
like once you do it for a while you kind of get stuck because it's like you feel like you're repeating yourself if you just do another tutorial like you know what it's like you've done tutorials yeah. already so no, it's 100%. like i've done bro i've done like three tutorials and i'm like stuck when i do this bro <laughs> i don't know how you do i don't know how you do it. it's like the same drill hi-hats and yeah, like, yeah man, I, it, I don't it know does get repetitive i can't lie so mm. i think just switching up the genre to start with like i've done like a couple like drake ones even like soulful stuff and luckily yeah, people sick. have liked them so i sick. think just keeping it interesting like that Ideally, I just want to get to a point where I can like just make anything I feel like making, film anything I feel feel like yeah. filming, and then it bangs. Like that's everyone's take it dream bro, goal. You know me, what I mean? Yeah, just trust me, bro. That's the way to go, man. So yeah, it depends what opportunities come up. Like stu- the ones that I like filming the most are those studio sessions. Like when we linked up and I just had the camera recording, yeah. and then we're just we're just cooking up because they're just the most natural ones. I don't yeah, have well, to like. It doesn't feel like you're filming a video. It feels like you're yeah making beats in a session and at the end That's of it, it. If you, you just edit it and it's yeah it's a good piece of video exactly yeah so it's I not forced you, or anything like yeah. when you're cooking up and you've got like stop and like explain everything it kind of takes away the creativity if that makes sense like yeah. you, it can fuck up your flow sometimes yeah 100 percent. yeah 100%. so speaking of studio sessions i know a lot of people have been asking me especially in um like the discord and stuff they want to know like one like how how to get in studio sessions and how to build right. relationships with artists okay. and then the other is like how to act in a studio session you know what i mean like, how to stay, how to, okay like how to know your place yeah. in a session you know what i mean okay okay so, well so starting off with like getting into sessions yeah. i know it took me a while to get into my first session and my first session i had it was with maybe six other producers and yeah. there was one artist all cramped into a little pirate studio <laughs> so it was it was it was wild but like over time it depends like i feel like you should start building up you should be start putting out content for a start so youtube yeah. content instagram content uh this is you know, a quick sustainable way of building up your brand i suppose and yeah yeah off off a bat of that if your content's good then obviously the artists you know they should be rocking with it uh but actually getting into the studio sessions a lot of at the start of it there's a bit of luck involved you know sometimes mm. the artists might invite you there but it's all about turning up to as many stu- first you with producers so producer yeah. studio sessions that's a sick way of getting your foot in the door because um you know if they one might person already have their network as well exactly you know like once you're in a session with other producers everyone's network is kind of shared in a way you know what i mean so yeah. every, everybody gets the benefit from that and that's quite an easy because it's easier to get into studios with producers and artists so yeah, yeah. I'd say start off with contacting producers and try working there. Um, and then the artist thing, I guess that will come when you start getting more online engagement. Uh, yeah. You know, I feel like you can't get in a session with an artist before having a relationship with them online. Because that, that would be a bit, you know, techie meeting someone for the first time that you've never spoken to. Yeah, um, yeah. But... I know once the opportunity comes, like I just say yes to as many things as possible, is what I'd oh, say yeah. because you never know who you might bump into at a corridor at a studio that and you exchange details. Like that's happened so many times. Yeah, where, you're like, right. Maybe maybe I was like, on the way out of one studio and somebody that I saw bumped into me that I've messaged online before but I've never actually met up with. Yeah. And then we just get a cracking from there. So I know it's, a lot of it's about being in the right place at the right time. Yeah, hundred percent. What do you think? Um, how do you think people should start a conversation? Cause I know there's a lot of weirdos in DMs that are just like either spamming yeah. people or just asking for something straight away. Yeah. And obviously, think... if you don't have anything like to offer first, then it's yeah. kind of tricky, isn't it? But where, where would you say people should start, or like what should the first DM look like? Yeah, like 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 you said, like you've got to think of what value you're gonna provide to the other person, because yeah. you know. To them, you're another somebody in their DM requests. They probably get a lot of DMs every single day. You know, they get a lot of people asking things of them. I feel like to ask someone to check out your beats, although it's polite, it's kind of like you're telling somebody else what mm. to do as opposed to telling them what you can do for them. Yeah, you know, it's like, like asking so for it's, a favour. Exactly. So a lot of it's in the tonality that you use. You can say to them, that oh I just de- I just emailed you some beats as opposed to saying can you check my email for example yeah. I feel like little changes in the way you say things makes it a whole lot more friendly when easing into artists and like yeah, how you 100%. how you start talking to them um, 
but don't don't be spamming people. Nobody likes someone spamming them. <laughs> Never like you, you, you. I'm sure you know oh, what I mean. Like, you get oh, people spamming, you know, <laughs> loops like what's your like like like, yeah, like yeah. four times it like kind of thing. So you got to kind of imagine it from their point of view. You know, if they're reading it and there's nothing special about you until you touch on until they click on your profile, how are you gonna get? then that transition to be made where they click on your message and then click on your profile yeah because like that's, yeah. that's where your beats are going to be of um, course. and obviously having that profile right as well because if someone does click on your, if you message someone like bro i've got beats and they click on your profile and there's just bullshit on there then they're not going to take you serious ab- ab- absolutely like your branding from day one is so important like yeah, especially people who are trying to build up from the start that maybe have 50 followers 100 followers yeah. Like they want, they want to get followers quickly, so they'll post a lot of low quality content. Yeah, yeah. Maybe you know, mm-hmm. even like like selfies, like me in the studio, like like this, <laughs> like you gotta think about from an artist's point of view what they want to see when they click on their page, and what they want to see is yeah. con- they want to see it looking quality. They don't want like some funky ass bio or something. Like you yeah. know what I mean? Everything needs to be looking how you'd expect it to look. Because this is, you know, a profession at the end of the day. So you've got to move professional. Yeah, you're right. Even if it means, like, I've heard some people say that they'll they'll just hire out a studio just to take pictures one day. <laughs> I don't bro, think there's anything wrong with that, you know. Bro, there's nothing, like, nothing, nothing wrong with that, bro. Like, if, if it makes your profile look professional, then it's a it's a good investment. It won't yeah, exactly. take too long. You can bring a few changes of clothes, so it looks like yeah, you're cooking exactly, up on different days. Like, like different day, I can say it's your yeah. studio and that, you know. Yes. But um. <laughs> No, it's very important to to I don't know have an image. You know, it's, image is important. Getting your face out there as well. I think that's yeah. quite important. I feel like it's very hard to, especially if you want to get invited to sessions, for mm. example. It's a lot easier to say to someone, "Oh, I want to work with you in real life." If I know what you look like on your thing, like I feel like I've already kind of got that connection yeah. with you, as opposed to if it's just screen recordings or beats. Like I don't know who's behind the screen, kind of thing. Yeah, um, so you think so it's important for producers to show the face in, yeah? Because there's a lot of people that just have like a logo and then that's it. Like obviously you don't you don't have to be a face man. You don't have to be out here every single picture like look at me. But yeah. but <laughs> it's it's important once in a while to remind them, you know, that you're yeah. working once and once. Sorry, for a start, like you're working, so you're in the studio, yeah. um, and then showing that it's you that's working. You know what I mean? Of course, yeah. No, I think you're right. Cause I see it all the time, man. Like when someone messages you, if you go on the mm. profile and there's like no pictures of them or like, it, exactly. li- like you said, it's just screen recordings. You feel like you don't know this person, so it's kind of weird having a conversation with someone that you don't yeah. even know, yeah, like, exactly. what they look yeah. like or anything. You're gonna be very weird. You're gonna be very limited to an online brand entirely yeah. if you don't have a face to connect with your product. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So I suppose some people can get away with it if if that is your brand, like your brand is yeah. to be like mysterious, like maybe it's a mask yeah. or whatever it is. I don't know. Sometimes it can work, but no, some, sometimes I think for the it can work. Especially like especially if you're building up from scratch. Yeah. Like you know, have it having your face there. Like it's it's a good way to to get yourself out there to get people to connect to you more. Of course. How about like in a studio session? Let's say someone gets invited to a session, and mm. then you're with an artist or maybe a few artists. It's your first session with them. How how should these producers be acting? I f- the first word that pops into my head is just cool, isn't it? Yeah. Like, you've got to be cool, you know. Yeah, it's, yeah. Remember, this is, if you're a producer, this is your job at the end of the day. So you've got, you got to act like it. So no fanboying out, <laughs> especially like, you know, if you get, especially when you start getting invited to sessions with bigger artists that you maybe yeah. wouldn't expect that you'd be at that stage before, it's very easy to get like excited. You know, you want to tell everybody, yeah. before you go there and it's kind of a thing that if you kind of just remember that you're there to make a product at the end of the day mm. and you can enjoy it afterwards but when you're actually in the session <clears throat> i'm sure artists hate nothing more than like if you're uh, what's what's the word like buttering them up a little bit you know what i mean all oh, right like ass like, kissing in a way ass kissing yeah you don't want to be licking their asses man like you're yeah. just trying to be you're, you're trying to be cool you're just another person in the studio yeah, remember you're there to do your part um but obviously be nice to be friendly with everyone have be respectful don't yeah. try and change who you are to fit in with other people mm. you know what i mean like you know if you're especially you know a lot of like drill rappers for example 
Yeah. You know, you don't want to go to the studio session and start trying to act like a bad boy because it's not going to look cool. You know what I mean? Yeah, just stay, yeah. stay, stay, stay true to who you are. Just be authentic. You know, if you got invited to the studio session, there's a reason for that. So bear that in mind that you're good enough to be there. Mm. And uh, just focus on the music. I think that's the main thing. You know, obviously, when you're actually with an artist, you want to be build, you want to be working on on that relationship with them as well. So don't just you know try and be awkward and sit on your laptop and don't speak to anybody. <laughs> You know, because I've seen I've seen that so many times. So man, I rock up to the studio, kind of spud everyone, and then sit down and not speak. And it's kind of like we're in the same room, but we're not in the same room. So you yeah. want to be you want to be connecting. And I feel like that's a lot harder. You've had some occasion where, where artists they've had ten of their friends in the room with them, and yeah, yeah. Them them times it's it's a bit it's a bit difficult. You know what I mean? Like as far as if you don't know anyone and they're all chatting and it's kind of exactly, hard to say your exactly, piece. Bro. Then, exactly, bro. And you know, I'm sure every producer's had that once or twice where they've mm. been on their, on their, on their ones. And there's been 10 other people in there that they, yeah, yeah. that, you know what I mean? And it's, it's quite difficult, but just, you know, be, just be friendly, be confident, you know, confidence, confident sells and it shows. Yeah. Um, and yeah, just be confident in yourself, but like, just be cool with people, I suppose, you know, be friendly. Of course, yeah, because I feel like if you were trying to act like you're someone you're not, for one, like, people will just clock that straight away, 100%. and then you just lose all respect then. Bro, bro, you know, if you're looking at someone, you can tell that that's not what you're, you're like, what dick? Like, you just look, yeah. you know what I mean? You don't want to be that guy. Nobody wants to be that guy, yeah, but everyone looks, but nobody's saying anything, but everybody's thinking, yeah. Like, like you know, you don't don't be that guy, man. Just be cool. Just be yourself. Like, there's nothing wrong with just being authentic and being cool, man. That's it. Because, like you said, you're not there to be a bad boy. You're there to work on music. So, you're there if to you're make not a bad music, man, bro. then don't act like it. Just be yourself. Make your music. Yeah, like, be confident, exactly, like you bro. said. And then exactly, you'll get invited bro. to more sessions. Because, yeah, like you said, if you're that one guy that everyone thinks is acting up, then there's no chance you're getting invited to another session. Hundred percent, bro. Exactly. Like, yeah. you've just yeah you just gotta remember as well and that always at the end of a session like if if it feels right to you you know try and suggest having another one at some point because like i said you want to be working on this relationship over time yeah definitely you know with the artist one other thing that someone was asking me in the discord to ask you is um how you maintain relationships uh, relationships with artists so let's say you've had a studio session with them or you've worked on a track before yeah. obviously that can happen like you might have that one session but how do you then maintain it? Like, are you, are you texting them, calling them, sending beat packs, like just talking about personal stuff that's not even related to music or what's yeah. your kind of process for that? Um, Obviously, you know, it depends on, you can make a judgment you know, in a session when you're with an artist, yeah. kind of like what feels necessary um, with that particular artist. But a lot of the time it's sending out a beat pack maybe two, three times a week, you know, just to kind mm. of remind them that you've got stuff there. You know, if, if they're liking your beats, then you want to be, you know, in the DM every few days, you know, just yeah. reminding reminding them. But remember, it's never spamming. Um, but if you can, like, strike conversations, um, say, oh, I, sent, I just emailed you some more beats, like, or well, what kind of beats do you want right now? Yeah. And like, if, if they know that they've worked with you before, then it's far more likely that, um, you know, you're going to be able to be able to engage in a conversation with your artist and uh, they're actually going to check out your beats. Yeah. Uh, and you, you want to make sure that the beats you're sending them as well. And as always, you know, you've got to make sure you send the right beats to the right artist. But um, you want to really make sure that once you've got that relationship, that you're applying that pressure with the best beats that you can possibly give them. Yeah. Because yeah. that's how you're going to set your name in stone. You know, that's like... Definitely. Build, Building relationship, like you said, is like is the, the start of a challenge. But then you've got to maintain it, and that over time, like it will become more concrete. But you yeah. just can't, you just can't force it. You know what I mean? It's something that develops over time, and you just got to have patience with that. Especially if over time you could take it to a personal level as well, and it's not just like always. Oh, I'm sending you beats. Like mm -hmm. once you spoke to someone enough times, you can start talking about other shit that isn't related to music. And exactly. then once you're tight like that when it comes time to making music they're gonna want to holler you straight away because it's just like your yeah. boys then exactly bro and that's that's the best way that's where the best music gets made yeah and, like, when you're most comfortable in the studio session like that's that's the best way that's how everyone should aim to have relationships yeah, with artists that they work with but i guess you just gotta remember that it can't be by force kind of thing 
it, course, um, yeah. you just got to allow things to happen naturally because when you start forcing things and you want to start forcing emotions or relationships like again it's it gets a bit you, you just want to ease off a little bit you know what i mean yeah 100 percent. what would you say your <laughs> best studio session is like when do you think you've made the best music with someone oh that's well like someone specific or just yeah just like with, with artists i'd say like what's like has there been a session that you've come out with, of and you've been like you know what that was just a sick vibe we made some sick music like yeah well uh, ag again with, with like on and t like those, that's what the sessions have been like you know yeah we, we come out of it and we're buzzing we're like yeah this is this is a good song yeah, i've had yeah. a few times with um jb if you, oh, yeah, if you yeah. know about jb he's he's sick and you know the vibes in the studio is always right we always right. we always start from scratch i feel like so this is another thing that i should have touched on earlier um being in the sessions i feel like you should always aim to be making a beat from scratch with the artist mm. like this is an easy ticket to um be having to talk to them for a start you yeah know, if you want someone to talk about um you can ask them right i'm gonna make this beat from scratch for you like how do you want it to sound and try and get them engaged with with the beat as opposed to playing ones you've already made yeah because uh, otherwise like you may as well just be there pressing a button you know what i mean yeah of course become more like an engineer then just hitting record and stop literally bro you may as well not be there um yeah so you should be always aiming to make something from scratch with the artist but yeah like i was saying with with um with jb like yeah we were making the beat from scratch you know i had a sample in mind so we were working like that and it always comes out way better that way yeah uh, no that so, makes sense because yeah, then you're both just fully involved from the start then like even if you use a loop like it's quick but I don't know like if you if you do something from scratch like you said like both of you have just been there from the beginning you know what i mean absolutely so, and don't and don't be shy to use loops man because there's nothing there's an artist does not want to be sitting there in the studio session <laughs> when you've got your little midi keyboard and you're fiddling yeah, about trying to figure, trying to, out. Trying to figure out some chords and yeah, you're you're pressing right. you're pressing your space bar over and they're just like they want drums they want drums are important for an artist because they can start writing when they hear some drums but when they've got no melody yeah. that it's you're sitting ducks until you start adding some hi-hats basically so always oh, aim yeah, to, melodies to can get, be the long part as well sometimes definitely the long part you know don't be shy to you know, have your melody come second or just mm. use a loop like loops are cool as well and in sessions are very convenient yeah 100 percent mm. How was New York, by the way? I forgot you were there recently, <laughs> weren't you? Yeah. New York was incredible, man. We were there for eight days and we got like yeah. 16, 17 sessions done. That's sick. In eight days? We, that's crazy. Bro, in eight days, just back to back. No to, sleep. Like, we had a, like a couple hours of sleep every night and then we were just back yeah. on the road. But some sick people out there. You know, the producer scene out of New York is, it reminds me a lot of a producer scene of the UK. Oh, where, yeah, yeah they, where they've got like studios out there and everybody's just linking up every day. You see it on everyone's stories, like it's very similar yeah. the way they work and it's sick. You know, they've got lots of talented people out there. It's amazing, man. I see. Can you speak on any stuff you worked on out there? Like, were you linking up with artists or? Uh, yeah, we linked up with, with a couple of artists. Um, we were linking up with a lot of producers mainly. Yeah. Uh, so we linked up with, with Rico, my boy Rico Beats. Oh, yeah, and, yeah. and he's sick we linked up with him for a few days we made a lot of beats so we've got a couple of bits and bobs coming with some new york uh rappers that's it and um, we will have loads of the producers so shout out like the off record gang with like a lao and emerald and you know all the people out there that are killing the drill scene out there you know the drill scene is very strong in new york right now is it still like I'd say it's, well, it, it seems to be like the K-Flock type of stuff now, isn't it? Like mm. sampled and then like heavy, like distorted 808s. Yeah, is that what the vibe still is? Yeah, that's, I feel like that's, that's one part of it. They've got, yeah. a, they've got a massive emerging like uh, Jersey drill uh, scene. You, you know about, oh, you know yeah, about, yeah, the, you know yeah, about yeah. the Jersey drill beats? Yeah, you know, the, uh, who, who was I speaking to? He had some like viral song on TikTok like a few years ago. Yeah. Um, I forgot his name. It'll come back to me, but... I know that's been mixed with like drill a little bit now, isn't it? Because Jersey it's, like had its, its own crazy. sound for a while, but now it's just mixed. Like you'll get you'll get some some rappers talking the maddest thing on these like little happy boom 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 boom. Yeah. boom. It sounds like you're in a club or something, man. And it just yeah, works. Yeah. It just it just works. And like so that's like a big emerging sound in New York that I noticed anyway. Right. Um, but other than that, yeah, but they're very heavy on the sample thing yeah you know even with that like cardi b uh k flux on that came out like this heavy on the sample thing in it 
Oh yeah, shout out to Elias because he produced that. This yeah, guy is only he like is young. Man. He's based in um Dominican Republic, I think. Yeah, but we're sick. He's doing the thing, man. He's sick. Yeah, hundred percent. Well, are you mainly producing these days? Because I know, like at the beginning, I kind of introduced you as a drill producer. Mm. But I don't know how you feel about that because obviously people don't like yeah. being put in a box. And I know you produce a lot more than drill anyway. Um, that's a good. I'd, obviously, I make a lot of drill because that's what's in demand a lot. So a yeah. lot of melodic kind of stuff, so the central C kind of drill, um, and obviously like the greasy dark drill beats. Uh, but I don't even like making drill that much. If I'm being completely honest, <laughs> my favorite type of stuff. Like just because you've done it so many times. I feel like that's, that's part of it. Um, yeah. yeah. And the actual type of music that I like to listen to is like the Lil Dirk, like Lil Baby, kind oh, yeah. of, all of them kind of uh, trap beats. Um, right, yeah. You know, with, with cool chord progressions and stuff like that. Like, that's yeah. a bit of me. So I like making those kind of beats and like uh, real rap kind of beats as well. I just like, oh, yeah, I, I, like I like making beats with emotion. Rap. You know what I mean? Just, mm. I like emotional beats that make you feel something. Yeah, definitely. Um, it's, it's, it's either that it's either one end of the spectrum it's like super emotional or it's like super <laughs> hard it makes you just like you know it's <laughs> yeah, like yeah. There's, there's no in between <laughs> depends how you feel in that day doesn't it like sometimes sometimes you just haven't got the energy to be like getting hype like that exactly then, man you just want to lay back little vibe yeah of course what about yourself like what you been making like recently obviously still mainly drill but mm. when i'm not making drill i've been doing some like like more like soulful boom bap stuff you know like using Sick. real drums like some rick ross like jay-z j cole Crazy. kind of vibes yeah and if i'm not doing that then i like making like real rap uk stuff a trap i've been getting like more into like trap and real rap recently just because yeah. just because i've made like especially like orchestral drill i've made so many orchestral drill beats so i just like keeping things like fresh man even like yeah. some drake type of beats i've been vibing with those recently 100 yeah. percent, man you just gotta keep on switching it up in it like yeah. yeah, I feel like as a producer, the, the, the more categories that like genres of music that you can produce well, the more valuable yeah. you are to an artist or to a record label, for example. Oh, 100%. And once you start making like one, like a different genre, you can pull skills from that genre and like bring yeah. it back to drill if that's your main thing. Yeah, like 100%. I'll like take, I'll make a boom bat beat and then make a drill beat and then like throw boom bap drums on a drill beat and try and make that yeah. work and just experiment with shit. Like sometimes it mm -hmm. sounds dead, but sometimes it, it works, but you, you got to try in it. Exactly. Like I said, you're learning like when you're in making different genres, you're learning skills, which you can then yeah. use to whatever other genre you want to use. So it's, it's good. Of course. Yeah. Definitely. One thing that I haven't really tried before is any like EDM, like dance music, <laughs> house or anything. Seen, I seen haven't really on, tried that. <laughs> I know, I know, I know when the sunshine comes out, you're going to start making some, <laughs> Some mad. Yeah, I'm gonna see you at the festival scene, man. <laughs> yeah, I'm. I'm actually at a festival in um. Slow down. Uh, it's called Nas Festival next month. Yeah, I know about Nas. Yeah. Dear, uh, yeah, you I should know, come, I... man, because I'm gonna be there on the Sunday. I've been hired to Slow do down. um. I still don't actually know what I'm doing. I'm like, I can't <laughs> DJ. <laughs> it's me and um this guy called called West. Do you know Westy? Yeah, I know, yeah, I know what, bro. It's he's like black, he's a... Blackpool, Blackpool Grand Media Days and that, bro. I know about. Yeah, I know about he's, Westy. He's killed it. It's a legend, killed bro. it so it's me That's and him sick. doing the set obviously he can dj so he's going to be spinning some tracks i'm either you and know you're just gonna be there waving your arms <laughs> yeah but i'm not a hype man either so i'm like oh, fuck, do i have ah. to be on the mic like getting everyone hyped right and shit. yeah but one thing that i am doing i'm, I'm bringing a, a guest with me um so i'm bringing diana drill as like a special guest so i'll sick. probably just like say a little bit and then bring her out as a yeah. as a guest you know what i mean because we've sick. got a few stuff dropping before then so that that will work out but I might even try it for a video. I've been thinking about seeing if I can learn how to DJ in like four weeks or whatever. And then, so I like film myself practicing in like Pirate or something yeah. and then film me like on set on a stage at a festival. Yeah, that'd be sick. So and you can, it, you it can could make, make some sick content. And it, could, it could be like, it could be like quite a high attention video. It's like the countdown. Like I've yeah, only got yeah. one week left and I still don't know how to add reverb. But I don't know. Like, kind of, <laughs> That's you know it, yeah. I mean? But like, that'd be a sick video, bro. I definitely, that'd be sick, man. So I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna try it. I'm gonna see if I can. I think they're using the same decks as they do in like Pirate Studios. So I'm just gonna watch a couple of tutorials, book a session, and just I see what I think from the first day. And then I was say what have you never actually there. DJed at all. Never tried. Yeah, me neither, man. Me neither, man. My my girlfriend she keeps trying to get me into it because she does it. Yeah. But I I've got I don't really know too much about it, you know. But yeah, I know I that do. it's quite it's a lot harder than it looks. I know that. Yeah, obviously it's easier. It, it looks like it's easier nowadays with CDJs because mm. back in the day people were like doing yeah, it on vinyl in it, so that would have been hard. That's crazy. 
But even still, it'll take like a, a certain skill. You know what's crazy? Uh, you probably get this as well when you tell mm. your family that you produce. Do people say, oh, so you DJ then? <laughs> all, the, all the time, all the time. I get that. Or if we're out and there's a DJ, they'll be like, oh, do you do that then? <laughs> so so, so do, you, do, you know, do you know who that is? Like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, I'm best mates with them, mate. Yeah, no, <laughs> all the time. It's like, all it's not time, even, bro. obviously some stuff's related, but obviously producing is making from scratch in it. And then like DJing is like blended two tracks. So it's like, it's not even the same. It does, yeah, a little bit of similarities, but f- I know. Nah. Yeah, I know what you mean, but I feel like with with DJing, it's more like playing an instrument because yeah. it's you know it's like it's quite it's a live performance. Well, it's meant to be anyway. And, yeah, and, yeah. And I know a few DJs where they you know, they've got all their stuff mixed and they just press play and they <laughs> but, but just have um, a playlist ready. Yeah, man. But uh, you know, at the end of the day, it's about what the performance looks like to the yeah. crowd you know if you can get them turned up if you can get them properly moving then you're doing your job right so it doesn't really matter what you're doing you know what i mean yeah definitely i feel like to be a good dj you need to have like a sick musical knowledge because you need to be like thinking ahead don't you you need to be like all right this bass is going to go with the the treble in this track and yeah. like you just got to know what blends well together yeah yeah facts no, you, 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 try. i say you'll, you'll be fine man for four weeks that's 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 fine man that's plenty I've of got, time got time You'll be, kill, you'll be killing it, man. I'm looking forward to the video. <laughs> I just changed my whole career. Yeah, I would, man. DJ. <laughs> it's like the, deep, the video pops off, yeah, I'm not producing no more. I'm yeah. <laughs> you know what? I bet the energy's mad, though, because obviously us producers, we're not really in the limelight like yeah. that. You know what I mean? Like a I've, DJ's I've... like in front of a whole audience just getting the crowd hyped. So it could be a sick feeling. Yeah, I've not, I've noticed that. Like, how, how do you feel about that? Because I've noticed like a lot of producers, I've deeped it. Um... Obviously, within our own community, yeah. everybody chats with one another and we like link up. But more time, like our time is spent in the studio. Yeah. You know, as opposed to, and when the songs come out, that's it because you see it all online. But like being a producer compared to being an artist that has the spotlight on them, like how do you feel about producers trying to come up and get the spotlight on them, dropping their own tapes, for example? And that. I mean, if it, if it's someone that wants to drop their own tape and do it like under their own name, I'm all for mm. it because it's a, it's a sick way. Especially if you've got those relationships to put out a sick album. Like if you've yeah. worked with a bag of artists and you can put something out under your own name, it's like kind of like doing a DJ Khaled thing, isn't it? Like I think it's a yeah. sick idea. Mm-hmm. Depends if you, if you want to be in the the light like that. Like personally, I was never I, I was never the type of guy who wanted to be the center of attention. You yeah. know what I mean? Like. I, I feel like that takes a certain skill because like rappers, they have to put on a whole performance in front of an audience. Like if a producer was on stage, then how would we get the crowd hype? You know what I mean? Like it's a mm-hmm. certain skill. But if you've got that certain skill and you, you can go for it, then yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm all 100%, for it. 100%, man. What do you think? Yeah, no, I think I think it's kind of sick to see actually. I feel like producers, yeah. producers have been with underdogs for such a long time. And yeah, yeah. when you have producers building such a name for themselves that they're associated in the same bracket as artists yeah definitely. i wouldn't say it's a different level of respect but it's you get treated differently in the industry i suppose you know if ah, you're definitely. if you're a take heath where you can put out your own releases for example like yeah it's, it just adds value to your brand oh, of course then you've got all the leverage then because if, if you're at a point where you're putting out those type of projects that are doing numbers under your own name that's when artists are reaching out to you to work with you like you're not dming people at that point saying yo bro i've got beats let's work they're reaching out to you saying have you got beats trust me bro and i feel like you know that's why producers they should be aiming to to like kind of flip the tables you know like be your own boss kind of thing yeah i mean that i have have people wanting to come to you like that's that's what that's what go i think yeah man there's no reason why you can't do that even at a smaller level either. Like you don't have to be working with big artists. I suppose like if you if you just know a few underground artists that you're working with, you can still drop your projects because you never know how that project's gonna do. No, hundred percent, man. Hundred percent. Is it something you're thinking about doing? Like you wanted to drop an album? Or something? Yeah, I, I've been thinking about. It. I feel like at the moment it wouldn't make sense, but further along in my career, yeah. I feel like that would definitely be the kind of the moves that I'm trying to make. You know what I mean? Kind of yeah build, definitely you know, build up a brand more of an artist kind of brand again i said get booked for shows kind of thing yeah you know it's that's that's kind of like that's for lit life you know that's for life that yeah you know, of course should be, should be aiming for kind of thing 100 uh, percent. there'll just be a bag of opportunities that come with that yeah, speaking about me. like branding yourself i remember when we when we linked up you kind of said you wanted to take a little bit of a different direction because 
I feel like, well, you said everyone knows you for drill, but you make more than mm. drill. So you want, wanted to kind of like step out of that. Not completely, but just broaden it, I guess. Like, have you, um, mm. what have you been doing to, to do that? Like to, to kind of like switch up the genres yeah, and work with new people and kind of rebrand yourself? Yeah, no, it's, in, it's interesting. Like a lot of sessions I've had recently, it hasn't all just been drill sessions. You know, there's yeah. been um a lot more like i've even had like a session recently where i was with mk um and we made a like a boom bap like real rap type thing yeah and, like for me like that was so sick to do and i thought the tune came out sounding way better than it was like just for regular drill beat yeah yeah um but i'm just waiting on them to get released you know it's a producer problem where yeah you're kind of relying on other people in a way to release the songs um of course, yeah but when I guess you can do the work out you like make these other genres but until the tracks actually get released then yeah, it's man. like the world hasn't seen it yet so nice. I guess when those tracks actually come out then that's when people will start seeing you as like all right this guy like it's not just drill he can exactly, do everything exactly man I feel like a lot of producers have that same problem but you just gotta keep at yeah. it like just making all different kinds of beats and when they do get released then that's when you know the conversations around your name kind of start shifting where you're not yeah. just narrowed down to a certain genre but i'm I, it's understandable because if all you've released is drill songs and you're gonna get labeled <laughs> as a drill producer you know what i mean so like yeah, I, I, I get i get it but um out of the same way in the next six to eight months should be a bit different hopefully yeah that's sick i suppose it's still good in some ways to like like at the start if you're just doing like one genre because once you build up like enough authority in that genre and then you do other things it's like people already know you but then they see you mm. being sick of something else and it's like oh shit this guy's actually hard like he does everything yeah. yeah so it's like you can dominate one thing for a while can't you and then start tapping into other things because that's what i was doing with the youtube channel i was like yeah. right i'm just gonna stick to drill tutorials because i'm kind of hitting that niche i'm like people are searching for drill and everything yeah. but then after a while you built up an audience so then people will just like fuck with whatever you're doing at some point because they just become a fan of you as a person yeah, rather than exactly. just like his tutorials or his beats so yeah, man. i guess 100%. it works out like the same way exactly like, it comes down a lot to your personality and how you project yourself mm. as well as the actual beats i suppose especially yeah, when definitely. you're put, putting out content but yeah no it's sick man 100 percent what about like producing aside? Cause I know like people think that producers just sit at home on their yeah. laptops and don't do anything yeah. else. Like <laughs> if yeah. you're not producing, like not making beats, what else are you doing? What have you been up to recently? Oh, that's a good question. You know, I've been, I've been enjoying recently. Can't lie. Yeah. I've been, you know, I went out, um, been on holiday. I've uh, been re just relaxing a fair bit, but other than that, um, I don't know. I spend most of my time producing. In here. <laughs> I like, I'm, 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 yeah, literally, like I'm, I'm in the studio like most days a week, like I said. And yeah. the time that I'm not in the studio, like me at gym, where I'm just relaxing most of the time. Yeah, yeah. But, so I think that's, I that's, like that's the that, same for a lot of people. I know, but I'm not saying that's a good thing though. You know? I, I know myself that I should probably pick up another hobby or two, like even like a maybe like a team sport. I used to play rugby, for example. Oh yeah, uh, I'm thinking about it now. getting getting into getting back into something like that where so my entire life isn't just consumed with producing because <laughs> I feel like well if it's something you love doing like obviously people might say oh all you do is produce but if that's the shit that you like doing then yeah. then that's what you like doing in it no 100 percent 100 percent bro I feel like everyone's just got to remember about balance and like yeah you, know, you don't want to burn yourself out because you know if you're going to the studio back to back to back for like two weeks in a row and you don't shower properly and you don't do other stuff yeah. and you don't care take care of yourself like it's not healthy man so um no, you're right and your creativity is going to reflect that i feel like yeah so, of course you know, having a balance. i've never been a fan of like the no sleep club you know when people say oh, you see <laughs> stuff on social media where it's like yeah Nah, we were in the session for seven days straight, like with no sleep. Like, <laughs> you know, no, when people no. kind of put that pressure on people, like they can't enjoy their life. Like you just have to be working 24 seven. I feel uh, like no. that's kind of toxic. Like obviously some yeah. people have to go through that to get to a certain level and you do have to work hard for shit. Yeah. But at the same time, you need a bit of time to like look after yourself health wise or just yeah, do other shit just to bring that creativity 100%. back. Like you've got looking after yourself is such an underrated thing, especially in a yeah. producer community. Because like you said, there will be times where you've got to sleep on the studio sofa for like two, three days in a row just because you're yeah. grinding and you're going to feel shit afterwards. But like, 
in eventually you know, just take care of yourself and that like, your beats are going to be way better because of it like you're not going to get burnt out quickly you've actually you know it's more of a social side to life as well than being on your own producing yeah. you know collaborating with other producers is is good good way as well of like getting that balance where you're not just on your own all day making beats yeah 100 percent. because like a lot of people are just spending a lot of time just at home in the room just cooking up back hunched over never yeah. seen daylight <laughs> like it's it's bad right it will fuck you up in time yeah. No, I don't know about me. you, but my back's already kind of fucked. <laughs> Bro, I can't. My back is terrible. My neck is terrible. Like, I need to go to what they call it for chiropractitioner. Oh, uh, like I'm, chiropractors, physios, yeah, and stuff. Yeah, man, get, get my back sorted out. It's all about posture. I've noticed you've got you've got my littlest posture. I can't lie. When it as, when it comes to producers, when it comes to producers, think? yeah, bro, hundred percent. Jay, see you, see you. Yeah? When you're on producers. <laughs> like, your your posture's like you got straight back, bro. More time, but I'm like. <laughs> I can't, I can't lie, yeah. So many um, times. Sometimes I get caught slipping. Like I, I do find, I feel like I'm forcing myself to get good posture because I was doing that exact thing where I was just like hunched over for so long. Like yeah. even like in some comments on YouTube, people are saying like, "Yo, this your posture's way off." You know what I mean? People have even commented on it, uh, bro, I and I could feel it in my back just time. waking up with aches. So now I'm like, I'm just trying to like keep it straight because it was fucking me up. The best thing I got though was a standing desk. Like, Swear down. are they good? Yeah, it's fucking sick. So, obviously, for like if I'm filming and stuff, I'll just be sat down still. But then, yeah. as soon as I stop filming, I'll just put it to standing up. And you just get a different energy as well. Like, have you ever made beats like standing up? It's just a whole I different actually, vibe. I actually, I actually haven't, you know. But now you said that, I'm gonna try it out because even right now, I'm catching myself slouching, bro. I need to like yeah. sit up properly. Too easy, like, isn't it? You just like so you just be going down, and down. <laughs> yeah, down. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Slowly throughout the day. Just, just slowly yeah. and like before Especially you know. Especially when you're in a dressing gown, you're like mad oh, bro, comfortable. Bro, 100%, bro. You know what I mean? I've got to stay comfy all the time. It's just it's part of an image now. You know what I mean? <laughs> I know I've seen you in that in a few tutorials of it like a lot of people yeah, man, comment bro, it's like bro, a legendary I've got, dressing gown I've got a studio in this dressing gown bro uh, yeah yeah just you've got to be comfy bake off get some sliders yeah that'd be sick good... to bring out some merch one time if you had your own line of dressing gowns I was thinking about it, like get a little like a little X10 so, yeah man yeah that'd be sick I uh, might, might have to do a little limited release release <laughs> stay tuned and that you know yeah of course <laughs> What about in, in sessions, yeah? Because I always hear people asking this as well. It's like, do you think it's important to to dress well in a studio session? Uh, yeah, I think there's a difference between dressing well and dressing over the top. Like, yeah. you know, it's not every day all the designer you can put out your wardrobe possibly. Yeah, because yeah. again, like I said, that like, you know, you're trying to be yourself. You're trying to be authentic. So I don't think being like dress like dressing up is such a big thing in studio sessions but as long as yeah. you're present presentable you know you, you know you look s smart you look like you're you're about your business you know you're not wearing your shirt which you got past the sauce down the last night kind of thing <laughs> like you know that's that's the most important thing but you know it's it's not every day or as much design as possible because i well, just do what you want in it but i say just dress comfy otherwise you'll regret yeah, yeah. it don't, don't wear jeans to the studio like an idiot Wear some yeah. shorts or some tracksuit bottoms or something, and you'll be comfortable. Of course. Why don't we be wearing tight jeans and tight shoes and a fucking tight <laughs> shirt? Like you're just it's long. <laughs> yeah, nah, that makes sense. I feel like you can you can dress like I don't know. You can you can still look you can still look fresh without having expensive clothes as well, in it? Like like you 100%. said, you don't have to pull out designers. Even wearing a tracksuit, as long as it's looking clean and it fits you, and you're just looking kind of fresh, it still looks presentable. The exactly. reason I ask that yeah, is because, like, I listen to a lot of podcasts and especially mm. like producer grind and shit, and they always talk about it. And um, I feel like America's just got a different culture for it. Like, I feel like Americans like judge each other by the size of the chain and like how they're yeah. flexing and stuff. You know what I mean? But I don't feel like we have that as much over here. I don't, like, you don't need so. to be rocking up to studio sessions with big chains, <laughs> especially like, if that's same, not. It's you, the same you thing with like mean? artists. Yeah, hundred percent, bro. Like with artists, even like. The amount of times that like, they'll come put up to you just wearing like a just a little tracksuit or something like they're not wearing their yeah. big bust downs like yeah, it's, just, yeah. it's just like it's everyday kind of stuff like i said you're there to make music it's not like a fashion convention but if you want to if you want to pull up and look stylish then do you in it you know what i mean but yeah, I feel yeah. like the most important thing is just like you're looking presentable so you know don't have some mad dirty nails don't like 
yeah like, like wash your face kind of thing don't be smelling <laughs> use deodorant use deodorant fam <laughs> and brush your brush your fucking teeth before you come to a studio you session brush your teeth <laughs> brush your teeth and use deodorant the most two important things because nobody <laughs> wants you to be smelling in the studio session just, the studio can get sweaty as well especially bro, like you said if there's 10 guys in there yeah, everyone's sm people smoking in there for example like like can't, like again you don't want to be that guy and it yeah. doesn't doesn't take much to apply a young bit of links and that you know what i mean <laughs> but um, you have to get the branded links as well like the branded yeah fucking roll on <laughs> yeah <laughs> roll, <laughs> roll roll on it for real geez you know the real, like, you're, a real, you're a real one if you slap it on with the, the roll on man oh of course <laughs> that's jokes so what's um what's going to be the plan with this second channel then i know you kind of touched on it mm. about like studio vlogs but are you doing tutorials on there as well or yeah i was thinking that i feel like there's it feels like there's a demand for it right now you know people have been yeah. asking me about it and i've done some before and they you know i've been all right so i'm yeah, gonna yeah. do them but i guess my plan is to do tutorials but in a more creative way so yeah. you know, i'm not I'm not trying to be uh sitting in one spot for the entire video you know we're gonna go out oh, and yeah. about we're gonna make each tutorial a kind of vlog kind of half a bit like you know how kyle beats yeah. other stuff sometimes oh yeah, yeah 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 like I watched some of his stuff recently and I quite like for half his videos half. are sick I can't lie like the way he films it and like kind of tells a story yeah. throughout it it's just like he's got yeah. it on point yeah exactly man. so that's kind of like where I've taken my inspiration I suppose especially like the storytelling side of things yeah uh, 100%. It's, it, I feel like for as a consumer I've only learned this recently because I've been trying to film myself it's a lot harder to know what to say on it. I'm sure you've had this where like you're trying mm. to film yourself and if you haven't kind of written out a rough plan or kind of script of what you want to say it's a lot yeah. harder to concisely get to your point no 100 percent. i feel like you need to have some some kind of plan like I, i'll be real like i don't really plan out my videos like too much i might the only thing i'll do now is maybe just write some notes for the intro like if there's anything i need to cover like if it's a sponsor or something or if there's just a few points that i need to get across but yeah. i feel like actually planning out a video properly and having some kind of script can go a long way you don't want like the whole thing to be scripted because then it's like it doesn't seem natural but just having yeah. like a few notes or something will just help the video flow just helps like you said, start like, I, I fuck up my words all the time i like yeah i don't know it's, it's kind of tricky isn't it and i've, I've not it feels like it's like less less natural the more you say something yeah yeah definitely oh, yeah, um yeah like the, um the more that takes you get and that uh, you met like you just you want to be naturally like you're just talking to another person you know what I mean? Yeah, of course. Like, like even us having a two-way conversation like this, I find it so much easier to not stumble my words to be, yeah. you know, like concisely saying what I want to say because nah, definitely. Of two. So I guess kind of when you're filming, like kind of try and do that, I suppose. Pretend yeah. that it's another person there. Yeah, you're right. And I've seen a lot of people do. I've done it in like one or two videos before. Like say you might have like a paragraph to say and you you've like, like you know kind of like roughly what you need to say but you could say like each sentence at a different location yeah you know what i mean have you ever seen people do that in a vlog like yeah, you might start no. in your room and then it just jump cuts to like walking down the street and then in the studio or something like yeah it sounds like that's the kind of vibe you want to go for just keeping everything like fresh and interesting yeah man you keep keep yeah that, literally you gotta keep it fresh and interesting i feel like viewers don't want to see the same same one it's shot. fl screen yeah you know, you know what i mean Gotta yeah. keep this keep the scenery changing i suppose i mean my bedroom is yeah, pretty right. boring like you know what i mean there's not much to see in here just <laughs> me and my chair in it so there's you know i've got to find some more interesting locations yeah <laughs> nah, it makes sense it, it yeah. does help it definitely helps so man what else have you what else is new then like what's what else have you got planned that's coming out soon because i know we're, we're kind of <sighs> touching around that hour mark so just yeah. before we leave the podcast I think calm, um, yeah, just let everyone know if there's anything that you're working on, like any projects that you're dropping, like obviously the, yeah. you've got the new channel. Yeah, um, so, so the new, yeah, the, let them know. The new channel is the main one. We've got the, the New York vlog coming. So when, yeah. we were, when we were out in New York, filmed over the course of the eight days, um, and we've basically consolidating it down into one video. And so all the sessions that we had that week, so it's a pretty mad vlog. Um, but there's going to be more of that kind of stuff, you know. Um, on the TikTok side of things, you know, yeah. collaboration collaborations with, you know, other YouTubers, other artists. Uh what else? I'm not trying to give it all the way, but like I said, we're working <laughs> with um with JB a lot. So yeah. He's got some tunes that's sick. Um and like CGM and people like that maybe. Um oh, yeah. 
but always got stuff loading up man and again like you never know when the biggest things they just come out of nowhere that i couldn't even tell you about because like like yeah. I, you know, I don't even know about it but you know in yeah, two, yeah. two weeks time you might have the maddest release that you never know about so <laughs> just, yeah. you get that call from your manager yeah man i just i i, I, I see his, his whatsapp message ping up on like my, my face just lights up on that yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what i mean <laughs> but yeah, well, yeah man cool. i'll leave um just for everyone listening i'll leave a link to both his youtube channels in the description so make sure you subscribe to both channels and hit him up on instagram is it just x10 yeah it's just x10 beats x10 beats bro i appreciate your time come on man i, I appreciate you having podcast. It, bro, it's been meaning to do this one for a while as well for a minute bro trust me man link up in the studio again soon man make, oh, 100%. A, make some more content like that that'd be sick yeah definitely man we'll keep in touch for real for real man i appreciate you having me on man